everyone. I'll just give everybody a, a minute or two here to catch up and uh, come and join us here on Facebook Live. I'm Michael Moore, as you may know. Welcome. Um, what can we do to kill 30 seconds here? Oh, well, this did start off as a good day today because my Girl Scout cookies came. <laughs> do -si does Okay. I'm just saying. I know. I know. It's been a it's been a long lockdown. So I also ordered some Samoas. Um, enough said about that. Uh, <laughs> come on, man. Girl Scout cookie day. It's always been a great day. Um, you know, actually, uh, I saw this documentary called We Are the Radical Monarchs. And it's about, I think it was a group in, in L.A., a group of moms who wanted to do an alternative Girl Scout thing. Uh, so they, they called, they started these troops called the Radical Monarchs, and they're young girls, mostly young girls of color. And uh, it's an amazing documentary. And, and the purpose of this alternate version of the Girl Scouts is to teach young women to um, grow up to be radical activists and involve themselves in the political process and uh, in the community and whatever. It's, uh, anyways, it's called We Are the Radical Monarchs, and that's our that's our commercial for this Facebook Live. Okay, it looks like people are, are joining us and are, are coming in, so welcome, everyone. And um, this is Michael Moore. The... Um, this has been, this has really been uh, quite a day. I don't know how many of you were able to watch uh, the Senate trial, the second Senate trial of Donald Trump uh, today. If you didn't get to see it, I really want to recommend, this is not like last year's impeachment. This thing is mind-blowing. And I really want to uh, encourage you if you have time before you go to bed to go on uh, cspan.org, uh, I think you can catch most of the day. I think they, they archive everything there. So that's always a good place I go to to see what happened during the daytime in Congress. Um, but also, I just heard that MSNBC at midnight is going to have um, uh, kind of an hour or two recap of the day because it was so powerful and so historic. And I, I don't want any of you to, to not see it because as much as I thought I knew about everything that happened on January 6th, man, you're going to learn some things. Well, first of all, they show footage that they've never shown before. They show security camera footage from inside the Capitol. They show uh, body cam footage from the Capitol Hill and DC police. It is stunning. Um, this, <laughs> if the Republicans in the Senate were truly decent and honest people, they would put their politics aside and convict Trump for inciting and leading this riot, building up the building it up for months by telling people that the election was rigged, it was going to be rigged. And then after the election was over, trying to do all the things he did behind the scenes to get different secretary of states to give him more votes, votes he didn't win. It's so criminal. It's so thuggish. It's so uh, mob-like in that sense. And they lay it all out. Man, the, these managers, these, uh, you know, the impeachment, the people from the House that are presenting the case, amazing. Plus, they've got their number one witness, Donald J. Trump. They just run, they just run, they just show him talking or his tweets or whatever. It's just all there. And then this incredible footage that they showed of things that a lot of us haven't seen. You see senators running, I mean running, all of them, regardless of age, running for their lives to get to the safe room in time. And they made it just, I think, in a matter of seconds, maybe minutes, but it's really, um, 
And in fact, they when they showed the senators, and I'm, I think they were seeing this, the senators for the first time, the security camera footage, um, the uh, Congressman Swalwell said, you know, I just want to run that by because I know for a lot of you are in the video and maybe you missed it. You want to, I want to show it to you one more time. He, he shows it a second time. He shows it a second time. And people that were in the press gallery looking down on the Republican senators, they turned away. They didn't want to look. Um, uh, Hawley from Missouri, uh, the main criminal there regarding this, trying to stop our votes from being counted. Uh, he was the leader of that movement. He and Cruz. They just show him with his feet propped up on some chair. Others are doodling. One senator is just reading a book. They did not want to look. They did not want to see what their president did. And, and the mob the mob that he sent up there to the Capitol building. I mean, so well trained. A lot of military, ex-military, police, ex-police, man. When they do the real investigation to see who was behind this and who participated in it, it's going to be pretty, pretty shocking, I think, to a lot of people. They even showed um, the video that my friend, Congressman Dan Kildee from Flint, we were texting back and forth while he was, he and the others who were in the House Gallery in that little balcony, they were laying face flat on the marble floor up there so that the um, uh, domestic terrorist, the insurgents, so they couldn't be seen. So they're laying down and, and I'm texting him back and forth during this time and you know, and I'm sort of freaking out here at home and I'm watching it on TV. He can't see. And he's texting me, Has the, have the National Guard arrived yet? And he's, and he, he you know, he, he's texting me that at, at like, I don't know, one thirty, two in the afternoon. Uh, the National Guard, I don't think, got there till 5 or 6 o'clock. And that's what one of the most amazing things about that day. It's like the Capitol Police were left to fend for themselves. Some of the D.C. police got there in an hour or so. They saw the havoc. They were calling for backup. And you keep wondering, where's the backup? It almost looks like a setup, the way you'd see it in the movies, where, where all of a sudden there's no police around. And it's like, this is really weird. And no National Guard. This goes on. The siege inside the Capitol goes on for hours. Most members of Congress have said that they, they were in the safe room or locked away in a closet for a good four, some for five hours. How could you not have help arrive in the nation's capital? In what would be, I think, the one or two most secured buildings in the country, maybe after the White House, the Capitol building, maybe the Capitol building first. Is there another building in this country that would have more security, more protection? And yet, no, nothing. It's, it's, just, it's just amazing. And, um, and I think, and they, they, they showed this evidence of how Trump was back at the White House. He said he was going to join them. He was going to go up Pennsylvania Avenue with them. But of course, you know, like most people like him, they send out the minions to do their work for them. He just went back to the White House and turned on the TV and enjoyed watching it, enjoyed watching the whole thing on TV. And, um, and then Republicans started calling him from the safe room inside the Capitol. Call off the mob. Send in the guard. And he's like, why? This is too good. This has actually stopped the counting of the votes, the thing he wanted to stop the counting of the votes. It stopped. The insurgents won, at least for a little while. They shut down our United States Congress in a way that nobody had ever been able to do before. And he loved it. And all these pleas, 
people that knew like Jared and, and Ivanka were calling them to go talk to your dad. This is a dangerous situation. I'm telling you, my friends, you, this is why you have to watch this footage that they showed today because the way it's been shown to us in the last month in the, all these clips, um, you know, just looks like a bunch of assholes running through the halls of Congress, basically. No, no. It was way beyond the asshole level. This was serious. They were out for blood. They they were yelling, where's Pelosi? They got it when they broke into the Senate floor. Where'd they all go? Find them. They had metal baseball bats. They had stun guns. They had, they had a whole bunch of different weapons. And I think a lot of people learned today for the first time it wasn't just the one officer that was killed that day, but there were two other officers who died, one who committed suicide the next day. And then a second officer killed himself, um, I think a, a couple of weeks later. 138 police officers sent to the hospital. That's the law and order party. The Republicans were for the police. They sent 138 officers to the hospital, injured. One, one officer had his eye gouged out. Another officer had three finger fingers amputated. It's, uh, but that's in a way, maybe this is good. It's all, now we see the truth. We, now we see who they really are. They don't, they don't love the police and they don't really love what this country does or should stand for. When you see this video, that they showed today, some of it for the first time, you will see a rage, a blood rage. They wanted to kill whatever elected representative they could. It was just amazing. And this and this very creepy when they finally found found Pelosi's office. They were given directions. <laughs> and they got in there, they broke into her office. And it's, you know, her office is the speaker's office, so it's a whole bunch of little offices because she has a big staff. And they're going through this place, and her staff is hiding in, in one of the rooms with the door barricaded. Oh, Nancy! Na this, is, this is these guys. The guy with the metal baseball. Oh, Nancy! Come out, come out wherever you are! I mean, literally, it's like, I know what you're thinking. It's the scene from The Warriors. But that is exactly the voice they were using. They were, they were hunting her. And they were hunting Mike Pence. That's what I mean. These, they, they had gone over the edge. And I don't think really anybody was safe. So when Congressman Kildy and I were texting back and forth, live during all of this and he's asking me what are you seeing on tv and all this and and he was sending me some still pictures because he was like putting his phone up over the railing because they were in that little area above the floor the gallery it's called taking some, some still pictures for me and i said man turn the video on you need to record this you need to capture the whole thing and he immediately turned the video on and and as he turned it on you hear a, a gunshot, and it's the it's the capital, the, the one police officer who killed um, uh, the woman. Her last name was Babbitt. She was part of the mob, and uh, they had broken the glass of the house door, the main door where you come in down the main hallway, and um, she was climbing in. She was going to be the first one in through the door. They were determined not to let anyone on on the house floor. I think most of the footage we've seen is a lot of the, is, are the, the ones who broke into the Senate and got on the Senate floor and went up to the, the podium and the desk and all this. But uh, as she was the first one to go to try to get into the floor and they're, they're, they're looking to kill somebody, the mob, and one of them gets killed. And it shocked them all that, that uh, 
um, she was shot and it looked like she was killed um, instantly. It does, I have to say, it makes you wonder though. You see footage of dozens and dozens and dozens and then hundreds and hundreds and then thousands inside the Capitol building, coming through broken windows, coming through the doors that are bashed in. How more of them weren't shot? This is amazing. I mean, everybody has their thoughts about that. I don't know. I don't know if there's something in the police training somewhere, everywhere, that says, um, well, they're all white people. You know, we don't want to start shooting all these white people. I don't know what else it is, because we all know if that had been a thousand black people coming through the the door and the windows of Congress, um, they'd be spraying bullets. It's amazing more people didn't die. It's it's amazing that um, the senators that were on the run, that they that this crowd didn't catch up to them. That very brave uh, black police officer who faked out um, the rednecks <laughs> led them. They thought he was going to protect the Senate, so they followed him, and he just he knew what he was doing. He led them away. They just fell right for his trap. You get to see the all points of view in today's footage. It was like a seven hour documentary. And I have to tell you, man, I I, um, I, I called up my congressman friend there tonight because I was just worried about how he was handling watching this today. And they and they used the footage. He sent, he started, he videotaped what was going on and them on the floor up in the gallery and, and I had been texting him saying, I think you guys should take off your congressional pins because you, you don't want to identify yourself as a member of Congress if they get in there. And then you hear Dan telling his fellow members of Congress, get your pins off and whatever. And he, I think he might have dropped an F-bomb in there. But, you know, that's not what we call it in Flint. You know, it's using that word in Flint. It's like saying, you know, puppy. So, but, um, but it's harrowing to watch. And it, and it kind of shook me a bit. It brought me back to that day, worried about him, worried about my other friends there, Rashida and Ilhan and Alexandria, the others, everybody, actually. I'm worried about everybody. I don't want to see anybody get hurt or die. Um, so I encourage you to watch this on, uh, on C-SPAN um, or uh, on MSNBC, I guess, at midnight if they're going to show something there. But... I have to tell you that um, not only does Trump have to be convicted, not only do we have to do our part uh, in the next few days to see that this happens and that the senators vote the right way. And I know, I know the Republicans are probably not going to do this. But can, can I just suggest something to everybody listening to this? We have to remove all of them from Congress in the nonviolent way. We have to remove them in the next election in two years, less than two years now. Let's call it a year from this November. And I know because you're, if you're a liberal, you're usually depressed and thinking, it's no good. We're never going to be able to do it. And then I just will always remind you of Georgia. Georgia. Yeah. If I had told you five years ago that we were going to replace the two Republican senators in Georgia with two Democrats, you'd think I was crazy or more crazy than you already think I am. But come on, folks, right? It's This is, I think we can get some things done in 2022, but it will require work. I'm willing to do it. I thought, I had one thought today watching this and I just said, you know, I need to do nothing. I mean, I'll, I'll keep doing the podcast, obviously. I've got, We've got some new podcast ideas and things we want to do this year. But, man, I want my other full-time job to be removing these Republicans from the House and the Senate. Every single one of them. And, um, and I want it done as soon as possible. And I believe that the majority of my fellow Americans, they may never call themselves Democrats or liberals or whatever, but... They don't like what's going on. They don't like what they're seeing. And I'm telling you, if you have anybody, 
that you think that you can, you know, bring back from the dark side, share some of this video today. Share some of this, some of what was shown to, to Congress. There were one or two senators who came out, Republican senators at the end of it and said, well, one of them said, uh, the, the Republican from South Dakota, uh, Thune, said, I think every, every American should, um, should watch this. Wow. You know, a couple of weeks ago, we only had one, one Republican senator voting with us. And then, you know, then there were two and then there were five. On uh, Monday, there were six. Now we only need 11 more. There's 50 of them. Six are already with us, it seems. 11 more? Am, am I being, like, am I living in some fairy tale land? Well, if you're a cynic, of course I am. But, but seriously, what if, what if just 11 more with what they saw today said, I can't be part of this? What if they were no longer worried about Trump and, and, oh, if I'm not loyal to Trump, I won't get reelected. What if they just put all that aside and did the right thing? What if they responded to their conscience? Okay, I know. Let's see what some of you are saying here, uh, right? It's a Trump cult. And, um, you know, oh, somebody's in Missouri. It's got this Senator Hawley. Awful, awful. I'm sorry about that. You know, listen, we can't give up right now. We've won the House, the Senate, the White House. Let's go. Let's go. There's, there's, there's no reason to be depressed about this or to think that, uh, you know, wow, well, there's 74 million that voted for Trump. Yeah, so what? There'll always be less of them than us. They can't fix that. We will, from this point on, always have more Americans with us. As the country becomes more diverse, as it becomes younger, as more and more women hold power, it has to get better. It doesn't mean that we won't have all these bumps and all these problems or whatever, but my friends, please, You've got to have some belief in yourself and in all of us that we can fix this. That we can remove these Republicans. The 147 Republicans who that very night of, of the attack on the Capitol building That very night, they voted to give in to the terrorist demands. So, that right there, I believe, I believe that we can make a difference here in these next couple of years. I believe in November of 2022, we're going to toss a lot of these Republicans. We need to find the right people running for Congress, for state, House, and Senate. One third of the U.S. Senate is up for re-election a year from this November. Come on. We can do this. We don't have a choice. We allowed this to happen. We allowed Trump to win four plus years ago. I want history to think well of us. I don't want, I don't want to be remembered as the people that just let this happen. Because here's, here's the threat that all the insurgents made on camera today, that they'll be back. They're not going anywhere. They have every intention of creating more havoc, more violence. Over and over, they just kept talking about wanting to put a bullet in Nancy Pelosi's head, wanting to kill Pelosi, hang Mike Pence. 
these individuals are absolutely crazy. And it is it has to be incumbent upon us. And, you know, people from around the world, they're still looking at us like wondering, are you guys going to get it together? Are we? I have no other choice. I have no... I... We did something great in November. And then again on January 5th. And the history books will record that this violent terrorist act that took place on January 6th took place just hours after a black man and a Jewish man were elected to the U.S. Senate from the very red state of Georgia. And history will tie these two things together. Within hours after Georgia, sending to Washington, D.C., a black man and a Jewish man. Within hours, the angry, crazed white men attacked our United States Capitol. It was just the next day. They are not going to get less angry. They have to know there's consequences and that's why every single one of them has to be arrested and tried, convicted hopefully, and some sort of, whether it's a reparation or whether it's off to the timeout room, Um, they cannot get away with this. They cannot get away with this. And um, so we have to make sure that happens. We need the full investigation so we have all the facts. How did it take hours for the National Guard to get there? Trump refused to send help. And so what the congressman said was at the podium, that alone should have him convicted and to make sure he can never run for office again. That act alone. Forget about the fact that, uh, you know, he incited them in the speech and the rally and the this and the that. I mean, I don't want to forget about it because I think that's at the core, his lies about the election and his inciting them to head up Pennsylvania Avenue. But even if that hadn't happened, had there been no rally that day, the fact that had they gone and attacked the Capitol on any other day and the police and the mayor and everybody is calling for the National Guard to get up to Capitol Hill and the Guard never arrive. The first breach, it was 12.53, the noon hour. First breach of these, of these crazed terrorists 12.53 p.m. The guard was not there at 1 o'clock. The guard wasn't there at 2 p.m. The guard wasn't there at 3 p.m. The guard wasn't there at 4 p.m. The District of Columbia, when it becomes a state, it's going to be the smallest state, mileage-wise. Where were they? We know the answer to this. There's a there's actually an army base. If I if I Fort um, is it Fort McNair? It's a mile and a half from the Capitol building. A mile and a half. There are soldiers. Nobody came. Nobody was allowed to go. Nobody was sent there. That alone, as Trump is watching this and enjoying it on TV, and seeing a riot that took the lives of five people that day, two others in the days after that. People died, 138 cops injured. And it could have been prevented, at the very least, 
a lot of the damage could have been prevented had the guard just shown up, had the army just shown up. But the commander in chief was not going to let that happen. Of all the crimes of that day by Donald Trump, that may be the worst. I mean, imagine if the, if, the, if, a, if an army base was attacked or if there was a war going on and, uh, you know, the other side, the enemy attacked where the Marines were and the Marine general just sat there watching TV, didn't do anything, didn't call for reinforcements, just let it happen. That's what the commander in chief did on January 6th. And he let it go for hours and hours and hours. My friends, seriously, how can any of us put up with this? We had one Republican on our side a couple weeks ago, and then it was two, and then it was five, and then it was six. And we just need 11 more. Do 11 of the 50 Republicans, are there 11 with a conscience? Okay, I want to believe that there are. I know, that's a big, that's a big ask. They tried to get away with not counting our votes. That's what the Republicans wanted to do. 147 of them later that night voting to not allow the votes of the November election. How much do they hate us? How much do they hate this country? How much do they hate themselves that they would remain loyal to somebody, a commander who hates them? who was willing to turn on loyal Mike Pence, turn on a dime that day. <clears throat> wow. This is a defining moment for this country. We all know this. Let's not miss the opportunity. Let's first call your senators Let's find those 11 with a conscience. Okay? Yeah, total of 17. But so that's, that means there could be 33 Republicans who don't have a conscience. 33 of the 50 don't have a conscience. Who, who suck the wazoo. Just, okay, fine. The vast majority of them don't have a conscience. Two-thirds don't have a conscience and are going to vote to support Trump. Okay, If that's all he gets, we win. He loses. 17, 17 times three is 51. Yeah, so it's basically one third. We, and we already have six, it seems. So 11, is that a lot to ask for? Come on. We have to make the calls again. I know, Mike, you're always giving out the phone number. We have to make the calls tomorrow, the next day. Got to call your senator, Democratic or Republican. Let the Democrats know. They'll let the Republicans, they're all friends. And man, my phone's been ringing off the hook. Dude, I think you might want to get on the right side of this one. I'll give you the number and I'll put it here on, my, on Facebook too so you have it. Um, it's 202, it's the Senate switchboard, 202 224 Three one two one. If you don't know the name of your senators, just say your state. They'll hook you up. The switchboard will. 202-224-3121. And if it's busy, you can try 225-3121. Area code 202. We all have to do this. I will do it. Call some random Republicans. People will say, no, don't bother. They're not, if you're not from the state, they won't care about what you're saying. Well, that's not necessarily true. 
a lot of those Republicans have national ambitions. They need to know that they're not going anywhere if they continue to participate in this act of insurrection. Sorry about the hair here. I know, I know it's an, a year without a haircut. <laughs> so. Okay, I know, don't complain. I still have hair, right? Okay, I'm, I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining. Uh, my friends, um, I don't want to keep you too long here. Uh, maybe I'll answer a couple questions uh, from you uh, here. And um, if anybody would like to, I'm sorry, I've not been watching the screen while I've been doing this, but, uh, uh, but it, it's so great to hear from so many of you. And I know we're doing this a little late at night here, but... Um, um, you know, it seems like a lot of people are thinking along the, uh, the same lines here and, um, uh, right, <laughs> right. It is hard to keep up with this is this flashing so fast on the screen here. Um, uh, listen, don't, the main thing is I don't want anybody to give up here because again, we won the presidency in November. And we got the Senate back. And and we still have the House. We have got to kick ass next year at the polls. So think about getting involved locally in your state, in your city. Think about running for office yourself, even if it's just a local office. More of us need to be involved in doing the heavy lifting here. Um... Um, so yes, we need to, I've been keeping a list and, and, and I will make sure to post the list of all the insurgents, um, and also of the uh, sedition caucus in the house of the Senate, the Republicans who voted to not count our votes, uh, from November, uh, heinous, a heinous, heinous crime. Oh man. Um, you know, maybe, maybe one way is to get somebody just suggested here, just convince enough of these Republicans uh, to stay home on the day of the vote, or just vote present. You know they don't want to. They don't want to vote to convict or remove. Then just remove themselves from the voting. I mean, I guess that's that's one way. That's one way to go. But I'm telling you, these Democrats that are that are prosecuting it have been doing an excellent job. If you have a chance to go back to um um was it yesterday or Monday? Jamie Raskin, the congressman, told the story of uh, January 6th and how he brought a couple of his kids there as they were hiding out. That's so powerful, such a, a story. If you can Google, Google that, the Jamie Raskin speech uh, there at the trial, uh, so powerful if you have a chance um, uh, to watch that. Um, somebody's asking, do you think they should have called witnesses? No, the main witness is Donald Trump and and the insurgents took video of themselves showing them committing uh, all these crimes. So, no, I think they've presented this case really, really well. And even Trump knows that his lawyers are awful. <laughs> they don't know what to say. It's, it's so clear. There's footage of the crime. There's footage of him inciting the crime. And then there's footage of those committing the crime. It's tough one to tough one to win when there's videotaped evidence. And I have to tell you too, they played some audio of the police on their radios that day yelling for each other for help. We need backup. Man, it is it is chilling. Absolutely chilling. It's it's um again my belief, that's why I do this podcast, that I believe sound the use of sound and audio is very powerful, and uh, I'm glad it's no longer a lost art, and that it's come back in such full force. Um, but um, it's uh, I think I've said what I've wanted to say here. I'm, I'm glad you tuned in to listen. Um, uh, I know what you're thinking that I'm I'm over here looking at the. Um, And that I have other other business to attend to. <laughs> no, that's not it. Um, 
but I am in, in some weirdly optimistic place. As scared as I am of how what we're facing is not over. And all the other things we're facing, the fact that we're in the, still in the middle of this pandemic, there is these mutations, there's more um, people dying. Um, and on top of that, we need the new president and Congress to get busy. We need universal health care for everybody. We need to raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour, minimum. We need all these things, the COVID relief bill, everything that has to happen here. So um, let's, let's convict Trump. Let's prevent him from ever running for office again. And let's get on with the business to save this country and to make life better for our fellow Americans. Millions tonight are hungry. Millions have gone broke. We have to stop this. And we have to remind people that Republicans and a Republican president put us in this situation. And Democrats, too, who through the years have just given in, compromised, let's meet in the middle. This has done us in so many times before. Now is the time to fight, to go big, as they say, and... um and to stop this party. People who used to think of themselves as Republicans, who see a need for that political philosophy, it's now gone. It's over. The party's over. Um, you're probably going to have to start a new party. Some of us on the left are going to have to probably do that someday. I mean, obviously, we need more than two political parties to represent the entire spectrum of political thought in this country. There's 330 million people. But first, we have to live. We have to get rid of the virus. We have to arrest it, at least, in some way. And um, um, we have to make sure everybody is covered. Nobody goes broke because they get sick. And, the, and for the kids that haven't been able to go to school for the last year, oh, man, don't think that that doesn't weigh heavy on all of us. We know you've lost a year, and it's not fair. And, and we're going to have to think about that as time goes on, how we make it up to you, how we make sure that you're, that you're covered, that you get some catch-up help, that you're not punished because of this year of, of 2020. 2021, um, but no teacher. I don't want a single teacher dying because we had to open up the schools again. No teacher dies for that. No, sorry. Not that's not the right way to handle this. Let's get them. Let's get all teachers vaccinated. And um, and then maybe we can get the schools reopened. But we all have to reach out to these children in these coming years, um, in whatever way that we can help them. All right, call your senators, 202-224-3121. Let them have it. Start thinking about what you're going to do, because I already am, what I'm going to be doing for the next year to remove as many Republicans from Congress and the Senate as possible. Job one for me. I have my other jobs too. Uh, but as a citizen, they got to go. You know it and I know it. Okay, my friends. Um, thank you for listening uh, to this. Uh, let's all get busy. Watch this footage from Congress if you can, please. And, um, and let's... Keep doing what we did in November and on January 5th in Georgia. More of that. That's who we are. That's what we can do. That's how good we are. More of that. You with me? Thanks, everybody. Thanks for coming on board with me here today, tonight. Be well. Be safe. Thank you.